There is so much nice to say about this horse and rider combination. Obviously quite a contented horse, moving nicely forward. And overall, I think the rider is giving him a chance to do his best. Um, but we will be talking about the things where I see you being able to move forward and making it all better. The entrance looks very nice, a pleasant transition into the halt, and a nice move off. Make sure you're using your weight as your first aid as you come in, into all of your downward transitions. Also, I think you would do well to have your stirrups slightly longer, and that will help you have your leg underneath your body. In the trot lengthenings, your little horse is definitely trying to lengthen, but you want to have the same contact connection that you have in your working trot. Don't let the reins go loose. The horse needs to work through your reins. You shouldn't feel that you have to let the reins go to um, have the horse go bigger. It's hard to judge the leg yield from the side. Make sure you have very little bend, really no more bend than you would have on a straight line going down the long side, a position um, away from the direction in which you're going, not really a bend. Make sure your circle is, is totally round. Again, that's very hard for me to judge from here. You want to try to keep your hands very quiet. There's a slight tendency for the hands to post. Now, in your left leg yield, it looks like there's not enough haunches. Again, it's hard for me to tell for sure, but if that's the case, keep your left hand put going a little bit towards your belly button to slow up the shoulders and maybe bring your right leg back a little bit more. The circle is very pleasant, but I'm not sure you need a leading rein. A leading rein is a nice soft rein aid out to the side but it's giving you a little too much bend in the horse's neck, perhaps a little more of a direct rein, and make sure your outside rein is helping to bring the shoulders around here in the corner as well. Think of turning the shoulders a little more with your outside leg and rein. Now a horse that's properly working from behind over the back and reaching down into a nice contact is going to want to stretch down. You threw the reins away a little bit in a good stretch. There's no loose rein, but the horse is going to, in order for the horse to want to stretch, he's going to need to be a little more honestly on the aids. That's your next step. And of course, make sure your circle is round. You know exactly where you should be crossing the center line. Keeping the hands quiet, making sure your seat is your first aid in the downward transition, that was quite good. A nice energetic walk. I always say the horse should look like he's going home to dinner. Now, in your free walk, you don't want to throw the reins away too much. Um, again, the horse should reach down and forward, which this horse isn't really doing. And your reins are very long. It's, it's not a no-no to have reins that long, but it just means if you need them, they're not really there. I always say give the horse all the rein he'll take and maybe another inch. Now, of course, your horse jigs pretty badly when you go to pick up the reins. This is a schooling problem. You want to spend a lot of time, loose rein, contact, loose rein, contact, back and forth and back and forth. So picking up the reins doesn't mean anything. Maybe halt after you pick up the reins or do a small circle or a little leg yield. Your Canada part is quite obedient. And again, a very pleasant counter canter. Make sure you've got the horse positioned slightly to the left throughout. A little tiny giving of his inside jaw. Not really bending the whole neck, but giving the inside jaw so there's a little tiny bend. The canter circle is quite pleasant. Again, the contact's a little inconsistent. And again, I'm seeing some looping outside rain. That outside rain is so important. A little pooping, breaking, and then you picked it up. You recovered beautifully. I commend you for that. But then there's no real transition back at the end. It should be really as clear as going from trot to walk, from, from medium canter, canter lengthening to... Um, working canter should be clear. In your transitions for the change of lead through the trot, the transitions are pleasant. Ideally, you'd have a fewer 
trot steps, maybe three to kind of show off. Again, make sure your circle is exactly 15 meters. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the canter loop. I got lost. Uh, keep the position a little bit to the right um, throughout in the counter canter. Make sure your weight is even in both stirrups. You have a tendency to sit a little outside sometimes, putting a little more weight outside. Be careful of that. And you could sit a little more in the canter. Of course, working without stirrups would be wonderful for this. And it also would encourage you to have a little bit longer leg. A good canter lengthening, a little downhill, but for the connection that you have, it's good. We could have a clearer transition back once again. I really recommend that you school a lot of canter, lengthen, shorten, lengthen, shorten, lengthen, shorten, back and forth. Now, and again, in the lengthening, you raise, widen, and make the reins, you raise and widen your hands and make the reins loose. The trot, again, I suggest doing lots of transitions within the trot, normal trot, slower trot, normal trot, bigger trot, back and forth and back and forth that the contact stays the same throughout. Don't salute until he's immobile. The um, mouth came a little bit open, as has sometimes happened in your downward transitions. That tells us that you're using a little too much hand and not enough using your weight or your seat. Overall, a really nice job. Very pleasant. I love the attitude and the the comfort that your horse is showing in his schooling but it's a matter of improving the contact and the connection that he's a little more together and more of your partner uh, which will bring everything up to a higher level best of luck to you